now in our sixth year. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is The Ramble. I'm Alex, and we go until midnight tonight on the eastern coast of the United States of America from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, on the other end of the line is Larry Bubbles Brown, who said he's afraid when he hears the word files. Files, yes. Why? Because I know it's going to say in the... Computer of jargon, it means something I can't deal with. Uh, last year, I got a uh, a handheld tape recorder, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, this can't be that hard. Then I looked at it. It said something about files, and nothing worked. I remember I just smashed it against the wall. That's how was it all digital? Is that what it was? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So it wasn't recording on tape. It was recording on a file. Yeah. So uh, so, well, so why didn't you just but call... I couldn't figure it out. Why didn't you I, just I, call I me? Pre- why didn't you just call me and we would have worked you through it, Larry Bubbles Brown? I guess I could. So someone gave me an old the cassette recorder. So. Oh, really? That replaced oh, it. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. All right. You know what most people would do with a cassette recording? Yeah. They, they, they would <laughs> put it into a file. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it's got a it's got three buttons. I think. Uh, Play, record, stop. I like that. Yes, but where where can you use it? Well, you just use it for yourself so you can hear what you've done. Yeah, right. right. You put it. Yeah. You put it. A lot of comedians go on stage and they they put their cassette machine on the on the uh, stool and record their set so they can later go back and listen to it. Right. Yeah. Well, this is last year. I was trying to. I did that album last year, so I had to record stuff and try to remember everything. And... I see. But I'm now getting played on Sirius. So. You're getting played on Sirius? I've got four tracks of the album apparently getting played. So. Oh, okay. Waiting, waiting for the money to come in. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Not if it's playing on Sirius XM. You know. uh, they pay uh, pretty well. It's um, $49 each time a track is played, is what I've heard. I, that seems a little high. That seems very high because all the internet plays it play less than a penny. So, yeah, I don't think it'll pay forty nine. I think that what happens is you're recording, and so they just buy a license to play anything that's on a recording, and then it's up to the various organizations that administer that to pay you. And I don't know if it's 49 bucks. That seems... Uh, I, that seems really high Listen, me, I yeah. love you, Larry, and I think you're one of the funniest <laughs> people alive, but I wouldn't pay 49 bucks to play... Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, they get... Uh... Have, you, have you seen a check yet? I'm waiting, because I'm, I'm getting paid quarterly, so I'll get the first check this month, so I'll find out. But I do know some comics that make three, 4000 a month off serious. Really? Yeah. And who are they? People you never heard of, really? Yeah, so I thought, well, maybe there is some money, but M- maybe there yeah, forty nine dollars to me seem wow, that can't be possible. But that's what I heard. Yeah, it doesn't seem possible either. But what the hell, you know? Take them for every penny you can. Yeah, you know. Um. So uh, you know, but uh, uh, so so the album you you've never talked about the album or plugged it here on the program. No, you know me. Which means you're really non-aggressive about your career. I'm passive aggressive. <laughs> passive aggressive. So tell us about the album, Larry. Yeah. Where can uh, we find it? Uh, it's on a file somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't even know where to send people to to find the thing. Really? I've got 50 copies. If someone wants, I'll send them one. <laughs> well, wait a minute. 50 copies of what? A CD? I have a CD, yes. Oh, really? Do you know what you it, it is? Okay. it's a. You can get me on Amazon. and. Uh, well, let me let me look you up here. 
Hold on a second. I think, I, I think I'm on Spotify, all those platforms that I know nothing about. Oh, really? Because we're on Spotify. That's... Someone told me that they've said, play on um, uh, what's Alexa, if you say, play Larry Bubbles Brown, I popped up. All right, hold on a second. Echo, play Larry Bubbles Brown. Songs by Larry Bubbles Brown on Amazon Music. Well, there you are. Uh, really? Wow. Yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> yeah, there you are. <laughs> Ec- <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Echo, stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, and it says dating, and then it says explicit. I didn't know you were an explicit comic. No, actually, the entire album there's, it's clean, except there's one track where I do the, the thing I used to do with Ruben, dueling porn titles. That's the only thing on there that's really dirty. So. Yeah, but it says that this particular cut called Dating is explicit. I and then it says it, your, I don't think it, your album I don't is think explicit. That's explicit. Yeah, I don't think so either. But yes, you're there. But well, I'll, I'll show you how important that is. Um, Echo, play Alex Bennett's Ramble. Playing Alex Bennett's Ramble from Apple Podcasts. Playing the latest episode, Alex Bennett's Ramble, December 8, 2020. Yeah. Wow. See, there we are. There's our show. Echo, stop. Okay. So, there you go. (laughs) <laughs> you and me, we're gonna we're gonna we're going to make Amazon sell so many of those Alexas. I say Alexa because I don't say the real name of it because then that's the word I use to make it go. Um, but, well, well, hold on a second. Let me let me ask Echo something here. Hold on a second. I first I want to see here. I want to get this louder. Okay, um, Echo. Larry Bubbles Brown. This might answer your question. According to Wikipedia, Larry Bubbles Brown is a San Francisco-based, deadpan, self-deprecating comedian and actor. He started doing stand-up in San Francisco in the early 1980s. He began appearing on numerous TV shows such as Evening at the Improv, Make Me Laugh and Others and made his first appearance on Late Night with David Letterman in 1987. Okay, so do you hear that? See? Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's actually your that's your Wikipedia thing. Yeah, yeah. So, Bad. but anyway, so it, 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 Amazon knows who you are. Yeah, Jeff Bezos. He owes us money. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, um, so uh, yeah, you know, I thought we were going to talk about death on this. <laughs> oh yeah, let's talk about death. Well, I'll tell you what. I was going through my almanac again last night. I I started looking at famous people. Some of these famous people. You know, Humphrey Bogart died when he was fifty-seven. Really? That scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Oh well. But he had a good life. He had a great life, I would think. Yeah. Except being married to that bitch. You know. Which Which one? Bacall. Oh, is she a bitch. Oh, supposedly she was the queen of bitches. Really? Wow. Yeah. My ex-wife, Ronnie, who did a pre-interview with her for uh, Barbara Walters, said she was one of the most unpleasant women she ever met. You know, so, well, yeah, there you go. But anyway, so Bogart died at what? 57. Wow, wow. Uh, well, you know, when you were a kid, did you ever worry about dying? Uh, I realized that we were going to die, so that got me really depressed, like in first grade, you know. Yeah, and then, uh, because when I first thought about it, I it just scared the crap out of me. That someday, the, the, the reward I get for being born is that I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah. And I had to look forward to that. Now, if I were a aesthetic person, or what do we call it, the, you know, the a touchy-feely person, I would say, well, it's just part of life. But that doesn't explain it to me. I don't want to die. Right. And uh, I remember asking my mother about death because it scared me, and she said, well, 
you know, like standard crap. Well, when you die, then you go to heaven and you live forever. And that made me even more depressed <laughs> about being in heaven forever. It seemed, well, you, seemed very depressing. You know, the thing that I, uh, my father said to me was, well, you know, y- y- you won't find death surprising. You've been there before. Exactly. You know, th- there was a time when we didn't exist. And then that started bothering me. It's just non-existence. Yeah, it's non-existence, and I don't understand non-existence. I, in fact, I the other day I was saying, let me go back, let me try and remember what it was like before I was born. You know, because you gotta, there's something going on in the womb that you gotta, you know, maybe you're playing cards with the uterus or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I can't remember anything. I think before I was about four or five. You, I bet you remember earlier, right? I have a memory when I was three years old, our dog bit me. So uh, that's my first memory of life. Okay. Is your dog biting you? At, at, three, at three years old. Have you yeah. been, been afraid of dogs ever since? I have, and they had to, they had to get rid of the dog. And, uh, oh, really? What did they do, yeah. put him down? No, they just gave him to somebody else, oh. but he was apparently, I was new and he was jealous, so. Yeah, well, they put the dog down. They told him they liked the cat better. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, I I barely remember uh, almost drowning. I, I d- drowned in some water, and I remember bubbles all over my face. That's all I remember. But I think I was like about five then, four or five. Uh so- so are you afraid of water now? No, no, I became uh, I was afraid for a while and then one day my father said, "Well, to hell with it." And he pushed me in the pool and I started swimming and ever after that you couldn't get me out of the water. You know. Okay. So I I love swimming. Uh but uh you know, I mean uh, uh, I I can't remember that. There's a movie coming out called Soul. It's a Pixar picture. And it's about a jazz musician who dies, goes to heaven, finds a way out of heaven, and winds up somewhere else. And that somewhere else is the great before. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> in other words, now you're not going to the great beyond. Yeah. You came from the great beyond. Now you're in the great before. And um, this is where all the pre-babies are. And I like that concept of the great before. That's a great concept, yeah. yeah. But I still don't understand it. It still doesn't make me calmer. And I every every morning I wake up and I say, is this the day I'm going to die? You know, what is this yeah. thing I have on my eyes are burning today? I'm going, it's, gonna, it's a brain tumor and it's going to kill me. You know. <laughs> because you always, you're always trying to figure out, I said to my doctor, you know, when I was going to get the, the radiation and stuff, and he said, yeah, you have, uh, you have, uh, 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 prostate cancer, I said, is this going to kill me? And he looked at me with a quizzical look on his face and went, no. But, you know, I just think, it, uh, to me, life has been constantly out to get me. Is that is that a bad way way to feel? Or do you much feel? the way I feel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, we. Oh, I think one time didn't we talk about famous last words of people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was Marlon Brando who said on his deathbed. So that was it. No, he <laughs> talked about he not on his deathbed, but he said one day you'll be on your deathbed and, and you'll, you'll look say, back over your life and go, "What the fuck was that all about?" Yeah, that was it. That was it. And you know something. It's true. He's right. He's so right. I mean, really, I look back at my life, and I've had a pretty good life, you know. I mean, I could gripe about it, but there are a lot of people who had bad lives, and I would be demeaning them. Um, but I say, you know, what what the hell was that all about? You know, it was it was a useless exercise in peddling for, well, right now, o- almost 81 years, doing basically busy work and pursuing things that really don't have any reason. You don't have any reason to have to pursue. Is any of this making sense? Yeah, but uh, I don't, I think you're. 
Mm-hmm. But you should be, I think you've had a very cool life. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's why I want to keep living it, you know? Yeah, you, uh, you've you been in the public eye for, yeah. what, six, 60 years? Well, a l- little less than that because I haven't been in the public eye for quite a while now. So, you know, what the hell? Hey, I, we've run out of time, and we just were getting to the most depressing we part of this there, discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez well, almighty. We can pick up depression next time. Larry, we really, we, I think we bring people up to a level that they haven't been brought to because they feel better about life because we are so feel so miserable about ours. Yeah, they go, woo, that could have been us. <laughs> woo, that could have been us. Hey, Larry, talk to you in a couple of weeks. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry... Yes, they call him Larry Bubbles Brown. Have a good time, Larry. Stay safe. Stay safe. Available on (laughs) Echo. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love, love talking with Larry. I hope you all feel a little better about things because we are so positive. Um, today uh, is my, I'm trying to clean the top of this, see, so you see my hand like that. Um, uh, ben, don't do stuff like that while you're on the show. Um, uh, today is uh, my, um, my 81st birthday. It's my 81st year here on Earth. Um, and... Um, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh, I don't know how to take it. I, 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 all day, uh, you know, people, uh, to begin with, part of the thing about being my age and having a birthday is that you get all these well-wishers on Facebook, and then you suddenly realize that everybody that was on your list gets a message, hey, today's Alex Bennett's birthday, why don't you wish him a happy birthday? And so I get like 400 of them, Okay. And uh, it's very nice, but I feel compelled to go through the list and look at every one of them. And occasionally I even make a comment to somebody who I haven't talked to in a long time. But it was ex-girlfriends and ex, you know, radio people I had worked with and, uh, and then just people I never, I don't even know, okay? But if you're one of those people who sent me a well wish or wish a wishing what whatever you sent me, uh, I want to thank you. It's very nice of you to have uh, have done that, and uh, it it is much appreciated. Okay. Anyway, where am I? Gee, my eye has uh, all kinds of gook in it here. I'm see, I'm getting old, so I'm oozing from every portion of my body. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, getting old. Ain't for sissies as. Uh, as uh, uh, Betty Davis once said, let me see here. Let me uh, let me just admit everybody uh, to the program, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll go over and, and see them all as they are um, they're coming in here. Yep, there we go. There's our uh, there's our initial panel. Uh, the rest of you out there, if you want to join us, uh, uh, you just uh, go. If you don't know how to get to us. You just go over to uh, gabnet.net. That's our website. Gabnet.net is the address uh, for the email. And then over on the right-hand side of the page, uh, in the right-hand column, in about the middle of it, it says, uh, click here to Zoom our program or whatever. It has a big word, Zoom, there. And you just click on that, and it'll take you right to it. I've, I've been testing it for the last couple of days for one reason or another, and it's very simple to, uh, to do. So anyway... Hello to uh, uh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Good evening. Happy birthday to you, too. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Charlie. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Good. And uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 Brian Neary. Happy, happy but- birthday. Happy My bu- Vietnamese friends say happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> So happy birthday. And uh, Trucker Steve, it always looks like he's in like a break room at some office somewhere because yeah. the back the back of his truck is so nice. That's really nice. But he, where are That's you? The, That's the bunk there. That's the what? That's the bunk. Second oh, bunk down. Oh, I said it's the bunk. Okay. Oh. So it comes down. And how uh, how uh, 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 where are you tonight? By the way. Uh, still in the same place where I was. I was doing my thirty six hour break. 
Oh, wow. Okay, you got to do 36 it's hours. It's actually almost done, um, but I'm not leaving in. Mm. I'm not, I don't like driving through the night. Right, so. ah. right. Uh, and, of course, your dog is with you as well, Rocky. And um, uh, with us is Chaz Leuvens, ladies and gentlemen, also known as um, uh, uh, John Larkin. Hello, John. Hey, How are you? Hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going? It's going okay. It's going good. Uh, I can't complain. I had, I, I had like a little uh, second bout of pneumonia for like there for about a week. Did you really? But, uh, well, it, I think it was just like when when the original pneumonia happened, it wasn't like a flu. I didn't have like a chest cold. I, I just couldn't breathe. And then, and then it kind of went away after I got out of the hospital. And then I had the cold part come back and I was coughing stuff up. Oh, boy. So maybe... Maybe it was just you know the second part of it. Are you sure you didn't have COVID and this is just the uh, the, uh, the slap no, back no, on they that? Did, they they did a test and I was negative, so yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, they just like, they do a test on me and I'm always negative, but that's just my personality. They're talking <laughs> about there. Anyway, uh, by the way, here comes Alan and I, where's Ro I wonder where Robert's been. We haven't seen Robert yeah. in about a week. Oh. I wonder. I hope, he's, I hope he's. I hope he's okay. It's always when I when I we hear from somebody every night, and then all of a sudden we don't hear from them, that I start worrying about them. Here it's the end, huh? Yeah, yeah. What was Robert's <laughs> last name? Um, Natal. 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 I'll have to get a hold of him after the show. Write him a note. And say you okay. We just just want to make sure you're okay. Jeff, anyway. were you there last night? What? Were you there last night? But then um, I had some computer pro. Uh, uh, yeah, Jeff wasn't on last night. Well, he wasn't on last night. Yeah, I, wonder, I noticed. I, yeah. I wonder where Jeff. Hello, was. everybody. And he, and and there's Alan, ladies yes. and gentlemen, uh, who's becoming kind of a new regular here. And uh, well, I figured we were going to have some birthday cake with you or something. Yeah, yeah, no, no way. Here's the thing, okay? Uh, I I I am trying to diet, go back on my diet, in my low carb diet, and every time I do. Marjorie turns around and throws something in front of me that I can't refuse. And tonight it was dinner. She sent out to our favorite restaurant for dinner. And so she orders, among other things, um, uh, a, a pasta dish uh, with a bouillonnaise sauce. It's just wonderful over there. Uh, so I had to have a little bit of that. And then she says, oh, and by the way, he sent a birthday gift for you, and it was a, it was a dessert. And I said, okay, well, I'll try a little bit of it. It had this chocolatey stuff on top, and then underneath was this white stuff. I don't know what it was. I think I tur it turned out to be cheesecake. I couldn't stop eating it. And then I told Marjorie, listen, will you just keep this stuff away from me? Then she goes up to Stu, uh, where is it, Stu uh, Leonard's, and she comes back with four, not one, not two, not three, but four giant packages of Stu Leonard's potato chips. <laughs> which are to die for. I mean, they're these humongous to potato chips that they cook themselves at Stu Leonard's, and it's, it's just amazing. But I keep no, telling no. her, will you please stop this? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Luckily, I haven't gained any weight, but I'm waiting for the pants not to fit anymore. I just sent off for 38 just to be on the safe side. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah, you when they're expandable, it's worse. What? When they're expand when they're expandable like sweats, it's even worse because you don't notice the weight gain. Well, until I, I, you put I, on something that has a belt on it, and you have to go that loop, the little hole you never went to. Well, before. I ordered these pants from 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 the Gap that said they had kind of a something flex or whatever. So I got the thirty eights and the something flex, and they were fine except I didn't like the color of the pants. So I sent away for another pair, and then I ordered kind of the wrong pair, and I got teal pants, which Marjorie <laughs> says makes me look like I'm doing janitorial work. Uh, and so then I sent away for another pair of what said they were the Gap Flex or something they call it, and these things don't stretch at all. I kind of like that little extra give, you know, that I had in there, but uh, but luckily it fits okay, so... I'm Are you sure they weren't stretched out already from you? No, like, no, no, no. They wouldn't go anymore? <laughs> no, it's just like a little, it feels like a stretchable fabric. Yeah. Uh, they, and they didn't have it in these. And I, I it said so. It, it said it was the, the gap flex or whatever, and it, it didn't have it. So, Anyway. Yeah. 
I cook for the kids, and then when mommy comes home, I already ate something small. When mommy comes home, she's all, hey, just finish this from the kids. Finish this, finish this. And I'm all, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, so were, it, you, uh, were you on early? I mean, it's, it's, it's just 8 o'clock here. Or Well, we, uh, we went on. No, we went on, but we had our 15 minutes with Bubs. And then I did a little bit of talking, and then about five of the hour, I started uh, taking oh. the, the calls. So, okay. you know, um, uh, sometimes I have a 25-minute interview if it's like somebody like Will Durst or somebody cool. like that, but most of the time it isn't. But anyway, so I'm wearing my uh, 1939 T-shirt here, uh, but I just ordered two new sweat T-shirts that say 81 years on them, so... I'm going to keep buying those until I'm not around to buy them anymore. Yeah. You know. Um, but uh, uh, I just, you know, I mean, uh, uh, she just keeps, I, and then she says, you know, you really should get on the bike. That's her excuse. Uh, get on the bike. Get on the bike. All right. Uh, which I would love to do, uh, except uh, I just don't like the way the seat feels on my ass. It's a little. Well, that's your. Huh? Tell her to get a new seat for your birthday gift. Well, yeah. no, I had she bought, all that food. She bought this seat that you can put on there, but it doesn't help. It doesn't help. You know, I, what I really need to do is have somebody come in and work out for me. I think <laughs> that's 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 my idea of right, right, Alan. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. it's worked for me. Look, I mean, look <laughs> here. You can see that I'm no small. Changing the the, no. the thing, you know, I'm no small guy. I'm like. Over three hundred pounds, six foot tall. I am. I would love to lose weight, and so I, I changed from drinking uh, Gatorade to diet Gatorade, and I get punished by my doctor for that. Why? Why do you get punished by your doctor for for, for for? Because the diet drink is not supposed to be as good. Don't worry about that. That's uh, the housekeeper. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's actually. It, it's who? Going to the kitchen. My roommate. Oh, your roommate. Okay. I, yeah, I got a roommate. I've been here for 25 years. Oh, really? So oh, I'm wow. stuck with him. He's stuck with me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he hates Trump, too, so we're okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's so, good. So you, you approved me on Facebook today. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you asked oh. to be, and I all of a sudden, three people dropped off of my Facebook page, so I immediately had the room, so I said... I, I sure I will. What a, what when I I pushed a button here. See, I just touch something and something goes wrong. Hold on, let me turn this off. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, it's very very easy to approve people. You know. Well, uh, huh? on my Facebook, it doesn't say my name. I mean, it says Al Cigar Dude. I'm giving it away, but that's okay. I don't care. Well, I mean, so, if anybody gets a message from Al Cigar Dude, they'll know it's you. That's right. That's right. And I got a picture of my boxer dog instead of my face. I'm trying to stay stealth. I really don't like Facebook. Okay. And so my birth date is a couple days off on Facebook. It doesn't have a lot of information about me. And, um, it, I, you know, unlike, unlike you, Alex, I only have like 85 friends on Facebook. I want to know all these people. I want to know. Who well, well, unlike you, uh, I, I, uh, have about 5,000 friends on Facebook, but in reality, I don't know any of them. <laughs> you know, what, what, what's happened is in our society, we have taken terms and cheapened them. And the term friend has been cheapened by Facebook. Absolutely. Right? I mean, come on, who's a friend? I mean, I, when people say, who, uh, who, how many best friends do you have? You know, like it's some kind of race you're on. Then I go, one. And they go, one? I said, yeah, two others died. You know, I mean, it's not like I immediately consider anybody that I've met my friend. You know, a friend is somebody who calls you up in good times, calls you up in bad times. You discuss it, you know, you're there for each other. Uh, and, I, you know, how many of those do we really have? But yet we say, oh, I've got, I've got, I've got 5,000 friends on Facebook. Well, boy, that really cheapens the term friends. The other word they cheapen a lot is the word genius. Mm -hmm. Oh, that Steven Spielberg is a genius. And my answer to that is that's going to be a little bad. That's going to be bad news for Albert Einstein. You know, I mean, it, it, we, we cheapen all these terms. We, we take away their meaning. 
And it, it's not right. Somebody know. in the media asked Donald Trump a couple of years ago what the J in his name, you know, uh, Donald J. Trump was. And he said, it stands for genius. <laughs> Did he really? Yes, yes. <laughs> and so, of course, it's spelled with a G and not a J. But yeah, was, yeah. Well, he actually probably then, believed it. Well, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a good speller to be a genius. Okay, that's right. Absolutely. He'll he'll say he was just joking after of he finds out it's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fake news, fake news, fake news, yeah. fake, fake news, fake news. Definitely fake news. Um, <laughs> but I uh, I just you know so I'm I'm sitting here going, okay, I'm 81. How did I get this far? You know. Yeah. And everybody goes, oh, congratulations. You know, people, they say, uh, if I were in a, at a comedy show or something, the comedian said, oh, and you, how old are you? And I'd go 81. The audience would applaud. Like, this was some kind of, uh, of achievement, which it isn't, clearly. All you did is you didn't die. Right. You know, and that's not something you go out of your way to do just to accomplish something, you know. So, yeah, it's been applaud for me. I'm 81 years old. I, I missed the statistics from Charlie. Did we get those? Well, I, ha I was going to go to Charlie with that next oh, because oh, Dr. Doom, who is a nightly guest on our program, and I had a theme song for him, but I can't play it anymore because uh, they demonetized me over there on Facebook, on uh, uh, YouTube. Um, oh, you know, well. boy, I wish I didn't have to deal with YouTube. I wish I didn't have to deal with Facebook. I wish... I didn't have to deal with any... I wish I didn't have to deal with you guys. Okay, all right, I'll be very honest about this. No, just kidding. Are any more people going to call tonight? We're here. We're doing our show. Anyway, um, where was I? Doom. What? What? Oh, Charlie. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, uh, anyway, it's time now for Charlie... Uh, to give us the count and the amount, because he keeps these statistics going. Yeah, there are 239,000 COVID cases today. We're over 17 million now, and uh, there were 2,700 deaths. 2,700. Well, that's less going than down. that's less yeah, than yesterday. Down. Finally, under 3,000. Hey, going down. It was more like 3,500. Well, what, the, that's the good news. The bad news is the reason it's gone down is there are fewer people who were able to die. <laughs> that's partly true. You know, I mean, here in, in, here in New York, we had 120, I think, yesterday. I'm positive. Uh, but uh, some, some of our statistics are going down a little bit. But, you know, I mean, it's not things are getting better. I just heard that we got... A whole bunch of people, like 29 million of them, who've decided to take airplanes for the holidays coming up. Yeah. <laughs> well, this boom we're having now is from Thanksgiving. It's just—it's going to be over 300,000 in two weeks after Christmas. I'll be glad when the holiday season is over with, number one, because I don't have to worry about giving gifts anymore. Uh, and uh, I'm cheap, so I don't like giving gifts. And there's a pressure of the holidays, and there's a pressure to have, for instance, pressure for gifts on Christmas, and a pressure to eat on Thanksgiving, and then the pressure to have a good time on New Year's Eve. How many here have ever really had a really good time on New Year's Eve? Yeah. Really, really. Okay, yeah. let's hear about let's uh, let's hear about your good times on New Year's Eve. Let's start with Brian. <laughs> Hold on. Let me make sure the door's shut. <laughs> I used to go to Vegas all the time with my friends, and they were big DJs there. So yeah, I had a great time a lot of times. So. What, what what are you what are you trying to say with the door closed? <laughs> Something your wife wouldn't want to hear? As, as in Vegas a lot. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. I was. Yeah. So I, I used. Yeah. So those those nights were fun. Was yeah. this was this uh, a, a, <clears throat> accompanied by a great deal of sex? Uh, no, actually not. Really? Not a great deal. Really? No, it was. Just when I used to go to Vegas, we used to party, party. We knew a lot of big people there, so it was fun. Yeah. How about you, uh, um, uh, uh, Al? You, 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 Alan, you said. Well, yeah, you know, it, it was a good time to take your girlfriend out, uh, open some cheap champagne, which I hate. I like French champagne, I, um, you know, but, um, you know, she didn't understand the French champagne. Go with the cheap stuff. 
get her drunk and uh, spend hours in bed doing things she wouldn't normally do. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. so it's, uh, I find that there's no women on this thing right now. I find that women are looser when they're drunker. You know? so, <laughs> take advantage of the time, no headaches. Not till the morning, at least. Not till the morning. How about you, John? You said that you had a nice uh, New Year's yeah, Eve. Yeah, well, it was like a first date, and uh, I ended up getting married to her. So, you know, it was a memorable thing. Are you still married to her? No. Well, how good could that have been then? <laughs> that was good. I, you know, we're still friends, but, you know, it was Yeah. It was, yeah. It was good memories. Yeah, I um, um, what I uh, I'll tell you the only good New Year's Eves I ever had, where I used to do a show on New Year's Eve, uh, somewhere, and yep. in the last couple of years I did it at the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco every year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that. and uh, I would uh, walk a block, essentially, from my apartment to the Palace of Fine Arts. I said I, I walked a block to work. And uh, when I uh, when I left there, I was about ten thousand dollars richer. So that's how why I liked New Year's Eve. Okay, that's a good reason. Yeah. And otherwise, that was my New Year's Eve for years. I mean, I didn't. You know, I you would have a party afterwards. I bring people back to my place and we just hang out. You know. Uh, Remember those Christmas things you did at Bimbo's? Those yeah, those were uh, those were Supper Schwartzmans. They're called. Yeah, yeah. I went to a couple of those. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, uh, yeah, we did bimbos, and we did those also at the Fairmont Hotel, the Venetian Room, yep, for a couple that's right, of years. Yeah. And um, right, whatever happened to Dick Bright? Remember? He's still around. Is you he? know, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, the band b band business hasn't been doing that well right. lately. Okay. So yeah. you know, uh, here comes uh, here comes a Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see here if he notices that I just. Clicked him in. I'm there really we go. Well, there. there's his ceiling. That's part of him. Uh, huh? Yeah. He's got, I, he's got an Eichler house at that. I was just oh. going to oh. say the same is, thing. Wait a minute. Is, yeah. is somebody brought this up. Is that an Eichler house you live in? It's an Eichler house, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of Palo Alto has Eichler houses. Well, Absolutely. It, well, somebody better explain to the rest of the country who's listening what an Eichler house is. I can give you a tour. Yeah. <laughs> you can? If you want. Well, yeah, I have my little laptop here. Oh, okay. what are you wearing? Yeah, a beanie. A lot of them had exposed beanie. <laughs> explain Eichler Holmes. Eichler, Eichler was a guy who, right after World War II, I think it was, uh, yeah. built these, shall we say, affordable homes. Right. Mm -hmm. For and the they, most part, he also made custom ones that are really nice. There's a few yeah. in Palo Alto, and there's a bunch of them in Sunnyvale and Marin. Yeah. Super yeah. Nice. But these houses that were in these tracks were pretty much yeah. the same house. You just held them, the blueprints up to the light from e either, either from the yeah. front or the back, you know. Uh, there's like, like five different styles. Yeah. Uh, sort of mid-century, right? Mid-century type of look. Yeah, yeah. like like see uh, big windows. Mm -hmm. like, Although these aren't the original, of course. But yeah, it's big it atriums mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah. Well, we don't have yeah. an atrium, though. Some don't have atriums. No. Yeah. An atrium in the middle. And weren't they called kind of A-frames? <laughs> Didn't they have an A-frame style? Yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. Some of them. See, yeah. the, see the ceiling is A-frame-ish. Yeah. Hey. But I'm at flat but, but roofs, no, too. Yeah. yeah. Totally in the flat, kitchen. Though. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you live in Palo Alto? Do you live in Palo Alto? He asked. It, it, we just lost your audio, I think. Yeah. Me? You lost. Oh, th audio? there we go. There we go. He, 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 he asked you if you live in Palo Alto. I do. I yeah. do live in Palo Alto. What street? I just wondered. Yeah. Because you know, I, I know Palo Alto. I just, well, what's I, interesting? I'm, what's interesting about those Eichler homes is they were built in the fifties, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. that one looks to be in pretty good shape. You know, it's not like a oh, yeah. modeled it like crazy. I mean, the kitchen is all <clears> brand new. Oh, okay, okay. So you had yeah. you did some remodeling, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it has the structure of the of the building remained fairly stable. Yeah, I'll tell, yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. We had a yeah, bunch of them in Burlingame too, where, where I live. Yeah, yeah. hello, Glenn. But yeah. The the big problem with them though is there's no subfloor and there's no attic, 
So right. uh, you can't rewire or repipe anything without like doing conduit. Yeah. Didn't they, didn't they, they also have what was called? Well, we got a new heater. Yeah. And we also have copper pipes, so it still works. Yeah, well, that's they had radiant heating, didn't they? We we have it, and it works great. But that's because ours has copper pipe. A lot of them they made with galvanized steel that it oxidized. Yep. And then we also bought a new pump for a ton of money, so it reaches all the way to the back of the house. But what would so, happen, folks, in case you don't know what radiant heating was, the the floors were heated underneath by awesome. copper. I love it. Uh, copper pipes, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, kept it kept you good and toasty. You know, I don't. But know here if, in Palo Alto, like half the houses they did with galvanized steel pipes, and so nobody, people don't have the, the radiant heat anymore because it just doesn't work. Yeah, with the pipes. But your but yours still does. Is it is it economical? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it works great. It, well, we got a real, we we spent a lot of money on a new pump. Mm -hmm. It's in the garage. It was about twenty years ago. It was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It works perfectly. <clears throat> Nothing ever has gone wrong with it. Yeah, Eichler homes were very famous homes, folks. So, yeah. you know. They're they're awesome. I mean, you feel it the light is incredible. Yeah, I mean just so much natural light all day long. They yeah, got beautiful. some really nice big ones up on the hill too. Yeah. I've well, they they yeah, uh, those like up in the uh Woodside Hills and up in the Burlingame Hillsboro area. I saw, oh, I used to go some in Hillsboro like geez. That's huge. a different standard of construction. Yeah. Well, you know, every town no, Eichler, but... every town in the United States uh had somebody who built buildings right after the war to accommodate all those people who wanted to buy a home, you know, uh, because this was after the war. People were coming back from the war. They wanted to, uh, uh, you know, have a home, uh, move out into the suburbs or whatever. Here in New York, uh, Levittown was kind of an example of that kind of thing, where the homes are all looked alike, and but it was uh, uh, Levittown was uh, affordable living, and so was Eichler. Yeah. How affordable was it for you once you decided to buy it? <laughs> Not affordable. Really? Um, so they yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> well, they're over a million dollars. Well, four years ago, in the middle of the la of that first tech boom. Yeah. Um, so that was not affordable, but that's yeah. when we were both like VPs at companies, so we were able to do it. Yeah. Uh, but but the value's gone up like crazy since then. Yeah. So. Yeah, Willow Glen. They have a every one every time they have one for sale, I go check it out. They're over one point five, one point six. What Eichler homes? Just the standards. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh my! Well, I don't is, even want the San Jose area. So wow. The yeah, San Jose really <laughs> almost close to ten thousand. So this is what we come to when Trump's term is almost over. With we're talking about Eichler homes and uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that, there, there's a yeah. one. I the first one I ever went to. I fell in love. It was an open house when I was looking for a net, my earlier house. And, yeah, it was Asian style. So they had the atrium in the middle with a koi pond and the waterfall. Yeah. And you could hear that waterfall from every room because they had the, you know, the, the walk, the hallway that actually. But my question is, when they were first built, which was, in, am I right? It was in the 50s, right? Or was it late, yeah. late 40s? 50s, yeah. 50s. Yeah. How much did they go for? 20000 uh, 18, yeah, 20, 20, yeah. Between 20 and 30. That, yeah. Actually, 20,000 was a lot of money then. Yeah, I yeah they weren't cheap. Yeah. 20, they were not cheap. Yeah, 20,000 yeah. is a lot of money back then. I mean, I remember we bought a house in Marin County that was up on a hill, and we paid, my parents paid 9,000 for it, you know, and they thought they, you know, and they took a, I don't know, 35 year mortgage or something on it, you know. Yeah. Because I mean, the average income of the average American in those days was about five thousand dollars a year. But, but, but you, you could live. You were middle class. You could live very yeah, well on that. You you could buy a house like that on you know you know like a waitress job. That's what my mom did. She was a waitress and she bought a house in Sunnyvale in the '60s for like you know eighteen thousand. Fucking house is worth two million now. Yep. I'll tell you how things my, have changed. I just looked on Zillow. My house is worth three three million dollars. $2,299. Really? Yeah. You didn't pay that for it, right? No, not even close. That's oh, also, wow. and yeah. You, yeah. The peninsula between San Francisco and San Jose is crazy. Before I bought this house, I up, upgraded up to this house. Mm -hmm. I was, I couldn't even touch anything in the peninsula. 
just crazy. And that's where I grew up. It's just crazy. It's really? So expensive. Wow. And you do so pretty expensive. well. Yeah, I, I grew up in Fremont, where I live. Mm -hmm. And I bought the house that I'm in when I was 19 for an outrageous sum of $70,000. Dollars. Well, wait a minute. Uh, now, how old, how old were you then? Nineteen. And and when was that? What year was that? Uh, um, <laughs> that's right. Well, that, that's going to take a minute. Nineteen seventy-eight or seventy-nine, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Seventy-eight. What were you doing? What were you doing as a kid for making that that payment? That's pretty. Cool. Uh, I I was working in heating and air conditioning. Really? Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, that that, that you know. He, uh, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, oh boy, when I was a kid, uh, the, the dinosaurs walked the earth. But uh, yeah. when I was a kid, when I was a kid, uh, my parents bought that house for nine thousand dollars in Marin, and it was a two-story home on a hill. You know, wow. it was pretty, yeah, uh, yeah, and it was a really nice place. Uh, I think when my mother, when my mother left, she sold it for 20,000 and I told her not to sell it. She said, but they want to give me $20,000 for it. We bought it for nine. I said, hold on to it. Uh, I'll pay the, the whatever you uh, upkeep payments, tax, whatever you need, I'll pay it. No, I wanna get rid of it. Your uncle says I should get rid of it. So she mm -hmm. got rid of it. All of a sudden there was a housing boom in Marin and within a year or maybe a year and a half, that house became worth $300,000. Jesus. Okay? And today, I would imagine that house is somewhere up around a million. Uh, you know, with that. Yeah, you know, more yeah. 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 So, so I paid $70,000 for it. And they're in, in the next door neighbor, which is a smaller house, I have a four bedroom, they have a three bedroom, mm -hmm. uh, just sold their house for $1.4 million. Oh, boy. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Well, you know, my, yeah. he, here's a good question. I see, man, when I was a kid, I was born in 1939, and everything, you know, was cheaper then. I mean, my father, the most money he ever made in one, one year was $5,000, and we were wow. a middle class family. Wow. You know, we were a middle class family. Um, and, um, but what I was thinking was, what did I used to get for an allowance a week? And my mother, my parents used to give me 25 cents a week as an allowance. Today, what are they, what, 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 what do you give your kids an allowance, Kevin? Kevin? Can you hear me, Kevin? Yeah, sorry, I was talking to my kid. He was no. I'm sorry. talking about excuse me, not Kevin. I mean, I meant Brian. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh God, I'm out of it. The Bri other Kevin. The other Kevin. Is it Bri um, Brian, first Brian, yeah. then I'll ask Kevin. Do you p give your kids an allowance? Yeah, they get they get about fifty dollars a month. I would say because but, they do chores, so they do the chores. I they did get chores too, and I got twenty five cents. <laughs> yeah, but you they can buy chores. more for that. They do dishes, they do all the stuff, so they get a little dot. Each dot is worth like 50 or 75 cents. So really? they just accumulate it and then, yeah. Really? Son of a bitch. How about you, uh, 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 Kevin? Do you, do you, uh, uh... Allowance in yeah. general? No. No, she doesn't get it. She earns it. She'll, she'll do chores on her own, mm -hmm. but she also uh, earns her own money. She does like crafts and does art and she sells it. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so she she does it with her with her mom. Her mom does a lot of crafts. She does her own jewelry, and she'll go in a booth. Like the last couple of weeks, she was doing a boutique, and she made two hundred thirty five bucks last weekend. So, wow. Yeah, she's pretty. Uh, she's a little entrepreneur. It sounds like. So it. I just let her run with it. Hey, trucker, trucker, Steve. Um, um, you, you don't have any kids, do you? Steve? No. No. Uh, uh, but so my question, I guess, for you is when you were growing up, did you get an allowance from your parents? Uh, yeah, for chores. Uh, also, I had a paper out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I had to work for my. <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. Okay. We can you know, hear, hear you. Just I had fine. a paper out yeah. with my brother. 
Um, so it's yeah, yeah. When I was in school, yeah, I uh, I had a. Isn't paper that funny how uh? In the Eighty-seven houses. Isn't that funny how you have a paper out and all of a sudden you end up driving a truck? <laughs> <laughs> but no, here's the thing. Well, before uh, did... I was a truck driver, I was a dishwasher. Yeah. Well, now I was uh, I I did, I did deliveries. I all did the time. some newspaper delivery, but I was I was like a substitute for somebody else. Like when he didn't want to do it, I did it. Okay, uh, and it was for the Independent Journal over in Marin. Do they have delivery boys anymore? Are they is that still? No, they're anymore? trucks. They're cars. Yeah, but what I'm saying is. They're not like they used to get a bunch of kids who had a bicycle and they would put yeah. this bag in front of the bicycle with all yeah. the newspapers. They go past the homes and yeah. throw, throw now them. Now it's they now they get... load the cars up with you know 3,000 papers and they drive by and launch them at your cars. And they're adults, and they're adults, and they're adults. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't care yeah. less what they hit. No, but then that was yeah. a great that was a great way for a kid to earn a living was being a well, newspaper I, I delivery did. I had, boy. I had a paper route in the morning and a paper route in the afternoon, and then I wow. did sub like you did. Yeah. And me I too. subbed for a guy down the street. And we used to, you know, play off each other. He'd take mine one day, and I'd take his the other day. And yeah, we had to meet the route manager down at the local school, <laughs> and my paper was a voluntary paper, so it was like you had to go out and collect from the people, and they didn't have to pay. And yeah. it was like, you know, you go – collecting for the advanced star and they go get the fuck out of here you're not paying for that piece of shit paper and then some of them would say oh that's a great paper here's your 50 cents for the month and yeah. here's 50 cents for delivering it and shit you know it's like you know you get out of 120 papers you deliver you get 30 people that would pay for it you had these quotas you had and you had to report out to your to your uh, route manager and try and get you know beat your quota and stuff and the route manager was like you know louis the the guy from you know downtown. Hey, how many did you get this week? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get, you gotta get more kid. You gotta get more kid. Yeah, uh, I mean, I had an examiner when the examiner was expensive. Yeah, so I had to I go had to advanced West star. I had if San I didn't Mateo get paid, man, I, if I, yeah, I remember growing up as a kid, being in New York when the newspapers here. I doubt if anybody remembers this price. The newspapers here were three cents. Nah, it was a little bit before. I think. And were... the reason they were three cents is because they considered the advertising to be the way they made money. They, you know, they were just paying back the cost of printing it for three cents, yeah. if that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in London, it was a dime. Hmm? In London, they're free. Every afternoon, they all the papers they just hand papers out to people. It's totally really? free. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we Just had for the ad. We had a, a newspaper here. It was called the Village Voice, and it used to be like I don't know, twenty five, fifty cents a week. And one day they decided we're just going to go free. And what they did is they figured they would sell more advertising if they could pass these things out by the tens of thousands rather than by the hundreds. And they were right. I mean, they did very well for years, but then eventually they went out of business. Mm -hmm. You know, but a very famous newspaper here in New York. <clears throat> Um, you, you didn't have to just fill the papers. You know, remember we had to get the stacks and then you had to fold them all. Yeah. And then put them in your bag. And then and if then it was a rainy day, you had to put them in the bag. In, they in the usually, bag. They yeah. were usually old, old uh, leftover uh, bread bags from the bakeries. You had yeah. to shove them in there. Well, no, what happened was they sold, they had those bags on a rainy day, but if you were the delivery boy, you had to pay for those bags. And then they would sell you the rubber bands to put the newspapers. <laughs> if together. I remember, yeah, they did sell you the rubber bands for twenty five cents a bag or something. You'd, okay, you but had to buy them every once in a did while. Did you ever do the newspaper fold? In other words, where you didn't need a rubber band and it kind of turned into a triangle. Yeah, and you shove yeah. it into the other one. Yeah. Yeah, and then I that way that you could so just. But if you didn't throw it right, yeah, it would fly open, and then you'd be pissed <laughs> off because the neighbor would get pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> paper would fly all over the place. Yeah, folks, you see what you're learning here. You're hearing from the uh, uh, delivery boys. I mean, that, when you were boys. when we were kids, that was the one way you could make money. You know, that's your first job. Yeah. And it was slave labor for those newspapers. It was all about the tips. 
Yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 well, I, I don't, did I get yeah. any tips? Well, no, I was just a rude. I just. You yeah. always knew the old ladies would give you the good tips. You always put it on the porch and stuck it right by the door so they could reach out and get it. And the old men, you just launch it against the door. So bam, so it hit the yeah. garage door or something. And then I used to babysit for the couple up, up the hill. Uh, and I would go over there and babysit for them and get paid by the hour for that and hope the kid didn't die. You know, because <laughs> I, you know, I just sat there, right? Um, but uh, so I made money off the newspapers without being a delivery kid. I went to the newspaper stand, uh -huh. I put a quarter in and grabbed all the papers and had it out of work <laughs> 50 cents a piece or something like that, you know? You thief. <laughs> and then you became a cop. My God. Yeah, did they find that out? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I wasn't always honest. Well, you know something? Correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but I've known a lot of people who became cops, and when they were in high school, they were the juvenile delinquents. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. the juvenile delinquents, it's a prerequisite <laughs> to be a cop is to be a juvenile delinquent. You gotta, you, you know, you gotta get arrested or detained by the police a few times. Yeah, you know, um, in order to say, God, this is it looks like it'd be a fun job. Exactly, and this way they'll never catch me. <laughs> well, I don't know. About that. <laughs> I know. I, I, you know, I, I, I was, I, I've been at, at buses, <laughs> I work narcotics, I work games, and I've been at bus where they, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash. And never touched any of the, I mean, I touched it to count it, but yeah. never took anything. I was an honest cop. I saw some people steal it. it by the way, uh, uh, juvenile delinquent, uh, if you're going to do that, turn your sound off because we can hear you r m using the uh, plates. Sorry, I thought I did. Oh, okay. that wasn't me. Okay. That was Eichler. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, he, but here's the thing. You you say you were you know you would bust people for drugs. What kind of drugs? At that time, uh, heroin was big, cocaine. Mm -hmm. In the '80s, uh, early on, I guess. You know, they they make a lot of narcs. That I had a baby face. Imagine that. Uh, but uh, they um, they uh, took me after I got off probation and stuff and made me a narc and you know and I had a baby face and I could barely grow facial hair I was 24 25 and mm -hmm. uh, you know you got to change your terminology you call it a car not a vehicle did, did they know. ever have you bust people for pot yeah absolutely how, how do you feel about that I'm glad that it's legalizing in most places yeah yeah but, but how'd you, you know they as far as I'm concerned the war on drugs has failed big time and so make it all legal, you know? Well, I mean... Except, uh, except for maybe meth. Meth makes people go crazy. Well, look, look, there are some drugs that are bad, but if they're bad right. for you, then it's a medical problem, you okay. know? And, and it should be handled as a medical problem. But yeah, I, agree. I, I don't know if I could have been a cop, even with all I knew about it, because I go all the way back with pot to, what, the 70s, late 60s, 60s, yeah, for pot, mid-60s. Yeah. And were you then still busting people for pot when you were smoking it? No, no, no. When I became a cop, I stopped doing drugs. Oh, okay. But what I'm saying is, so you, but you did the drug before <laughs> you busted people for it, but then you knew, then you were busting people for it, but you knew how benign the drug was because marijuana is pretty benign. You know what? Well, you know, in California at that time, it was still a felony to be in possession of a joint. I know. Some states. Some states are still that way, unfortunately. Yeah, but I mean, it was, it, you know, the point is, is that I think I would have found it very hard to have been a pot smoker and then go and bust people for smoking pot, you know, because, because I, but among other things, you know how benign it is, you know, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you when you smoke pot? Well, I gained a few pounds because I got the munchies, right? you right. know, and, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I, I can see where... People might consider sales of certain drugs like heroin um, and uh, cocaine, although that was one of my favorite recreational drugs at one point. Imagine uh, that. Uh, and and uh, meth and things like that. But dealers were the problem. But a lot of times the dealers were the users. 
That's how they supplied their habit was by selling the stuff as well. So, it, you know, I mean, everybody was kind of a victim in that situation. But I think that's the reason I could have never been a cop. I could never have busted somebody for anything because one day I might wind up doing the same exact thing, you know? Yes, uh, John Larkin. Yeah, um, the Tenderloin Police Department, they've got a, you know, a Twitter account. Yeah. And, you know, and they're always reporting people they bust. Yeah. And I was reading it today. They busted this guy with like, uh, he had he had fentanyl, heroin, uh, meth, and uh, cocaine, and he was dealing on the streets, and he had like ten thousand dollars on him, and a fucking uh, in in a in a pistol. They busted him. He was out. They he, they let him out on OR b before the day was over, and it's the third time he's been busted. I mean, they, they don't even now that you, you can fucking do anything in, in, in the Tenderloin in San Francisco and they, they, they'll bust you. You'll go to court and boom, you're right back on the street. It's wow. amazing. Well, so you, you live in San Francisco. Yeah. in the Tenderloin. Yeah. OK, so, I, you know, I, yeah, I, I have friends that are on the police department there. So the city's very liberal. Yeah. And a lot of times the DAs that are coming in are cutting people loose. Yeah. For minor drug offenses, if there was a gun involved, I'm surprised that they cut the guy loose. I know, uh, especially at the third time. Just the seriousness. Yeah, they, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to work in San Francisco. It's, they, they don't fucking enforce it. Any, you know, the, the DA in San Francisco, his parents were uh, uh, members of the uh, what was that terrorist organization in the '60s? Uh, the Weather Underground or something. Like that. What? No, the weather underground. The SLA. Well, no, the oh, weather underground. Yeah. The weather underground. Uh, whatever it is. Huh? Liberation the, Army. No, 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 no. He's, he's yeah. talking about the weather underground, which was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before that. Yeah. Never yeah. heard of that. Yeah. Uh, were, you yeah. know what? You know, yes, one sir. thing about the tenderloin that's amazing is. Uh, but let's wait. Let's even, explain even for a second. The tenderloin oh. is a district in San Francisco. I don't know how it ever got its name. Uh, uh, I do. Yeah, how did uh, it? I do. Was just telling because me. because back in the old days, 1860s, 1870s, whatever, it, it was the best area of the city. It was because the, the, the weather was always nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, the fog didn't reach there, and it's one of the reasons. What I was just going to say: some of the apartments there, apartment buildings on the outside, it looks like hell. You go in, they're absolutely beautiful, like. Yeah. I don't know what, what you live in. Um, well, the Tenderloin, yeah, when I was growing up in San Francisco, was actually the poor part of town. That was the yeah. Yeah. That, that was the scuzzy place to go to. It still is. It still is. And I'm talking is. about in the last well, you know, the two centuries The reason why it's ago. so bad is, is, is it's all city-controlled uh, SROs, you know? Mm -hmm. They're in, so the SROs, they call that single-room occupancy, you know? And so it's mainly people that are on the dole that get their rent paid by the city, Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're, they live in these, and, you know, the owners of the apartments let them go to hell. So Because I remember one night, I can't remember what I was doing, but I, I was going home, and I took a right when I should have taken a left, and I went right through what is near the Tenderloin. I don't know what you call the area right now, but all, they that, that on Saturday night, that's where the hookers stood out there. Yeah. Uh, plying they their trade. That. They, I know, they're, but I'm... They're but, hiding now, yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they would be just standing out there, and all these guys would be driving up there and talking to them. And you couldn't – the worst part was I didn't mind the hookers, and I didn't mind even the crime aspect of it. What I minded was it blocked traffic. You couldn't get through there. It was like a, a human traffic jam because all these women are, like, going up to the cars and talking to the guys, and the guys are talking to them, and they're getting in the cars and giving blowjobs. And and. I just wanted to get home. They're all tranny hookers now. R really? Yeah, you got unless, to unless you go, you go unless you unless you go over to um, over by like where the theaters are. There's high end ones walking the street there. Yeah. I've anymore. been there so many times. And they, how do you yeah, how, how do you how do you, how do you know this, there. Ray? How do you know this, Ray? Because I because <laughs> many times because I I've walked there going to work and I get stopped like in proposition by beautiful women. Yeah, yeah, you like haven't a, been here for a while, man. It's it's cheap. It's pretty rough check. now. Oh no, no, no! This is before COVID. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I wonder how. Yeah, you know, I, I I saw I've seen things on television about how 
COVID has affected certain professions like uh, the, uh, the people who go to games, football games dressed up as things, how their lives have been impacted by it and how socially they feel out of the, out of the, out of the loop. Uh, and uh, I'm wondering how this has affected prostitutes, street prostitution. Uh, anytime any of you see a street prostitute, next time, ask her how it's going. Okay. What if we wear, make them wear a mask? Yeah, right. Put a mouth rubber. <laughs> yeah, mouth rubber. Put a hole in the middle of the mask. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, how how are you doing up there in uh, Connecticut? It was a lot of snow up there, according to Pamela. Pamela told that to Marjorie. A, yes. Yeah. A lot of snow. I don't know. It was, you know, maybe it was six, eight inches. Yeah. Yeah. But it was blowing like crazy. So one place it would be like ten feet thick, and then the other part there was no snow there at all. It would just blow from one direction. Yeah, well, the other night on the show, you could hear it outside here, hitting the window like crazy. You know. Yeah. Today it looked uh, pretty nice, but the good thing about Connecticut today is a bunch of these old uh, people are starting to get the Pfizer uh, drugs today. Well, in the in the in the uh, nursing homes. The nursing homes, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, good. I hear that you and I are not going to be able to get it till maybe the end of January. I don't know. A little longer. Have to really. Well, I'm 81. I should be able to get it soon, you know, because I'm in that that age group, you know. But well, I'm fat, and I should be able to get it soon too. But soon is relative. They're you know they're, they're putting out millions of doses a day, and now Moderna got FDA approval today, and so that'll be more. But I don't know how many million people there are that are actually willing to get the vaccine. And, uh, you know, they're vaccinating health care and convalescent people first. What's interesting is, is that usually when these things happen, there's always some major fuck up. OK, uh, that they go out and report. Well, you know what the major fuck up is they're reporting? Sure. He leaves on January 20th. No, no. The, <laughs> that, that Pfizer said, whoops, uh, we maybe put six or seven doses in each vial instead of five. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that's the good news. There are more doses out there than they thought were out there. Well, that's good. But uh, Pfizer said they've overfilled them, I think, because maybe people would overuse them or something like that, not not exactly do a proper apportioning of it, but that each one could do at least six instead of five, which if you've got a million doses out there, uh, you know, how many more doses is that per vial? <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I I think they're gonna they're gonna have a problem when they start getting the second dose because you have all these you know they have a steady rate of how many people they're able to take care of. Yeah. Well, when those yeah. people come in for their second one, you know that's gonna go down because they have that second shot for those other people. Oh wow! So okay. That's why they really need to make sure that they keep getting these vaccines approved if they're safe. You know. Yeah, they have everybody who's getting one is going to be filling out a card. And then the pharmacy or wherever you have it done will then send you a notification, come in and get your other shot. Yeah, but that, so that those next shots have to be prioritized for those people and not the people who are coming next in line. That's correct. Yeah. Why, why don't you just wait to get the Moderna one? Then you don't got to get two shots. No, no, Moderna's two shots, too. And Moderna's two shots. Yeah, oh, but it was the Oxford that's one. But, oh. you, but you can keep it in your refrigerator at home. You know, yeah. it's, it's not. Uh, it's. What, you're gonna shoot yourself later in a month or so. Do it yourself. No, he's just joking. I, I, I wouldn't want to shoot myself. Yeah. No. No, <laughs> no way. I'm not shooting myself. Well, you know, you know what? Like uh, on, te uh, on television, uh, uh, MSNBC has become the all vac the vaccine all vaccination all the time channel. <laughs> it's like every time somebody's getting a vaccination, here's another person who's getting a vaccine, and they take a shot of them getting a vaccination. Today it was. Pence, uh, yeah. but I look at it and I'm going. I wouldn't show that to the public. And the reason I wouldn't is that needle goes in really far, <laughs> and I'm you sure. Can't feel it, huh? It's so skinny. I know, I know. It. You don't feel it, and it's very simple. 
But you still, if you're showing everybody in America, well, this is how deep it goes. You're not exactly you saying. See the guy that was doing Pence too, he was shaking. Yeah. <laughs> it was like this. Boom, <laughs> it was like shooting for a bullseye. Now here's the thing. But Pence likes getting poked, so uh, Biden is getting his on Monday. <laughs> here's the thing. He Biden and Jill Biden, Doctor Biden. Yeah. Um, are 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 getting theirs on Monday, and then Kamala and her husband are getting them a week later. Why is that? Why aren't they getting it at the same time? He said, "Oh no, you're the vice president. You have to wait a week." I think it's because drops. of the Skogi, the, the Pascogi experiment. <clears throat> the, the, the Tuskegee experiment. The Tuskegee experiment. Sorry. They want to make sure the five G is working. <laughs> He's Biden and I you want to check, you want to check his brain. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. bet, I bet Trump brain. will get one. He'll, he'll say, no, I'm not going to get it. So this guy yeah, I, can't, I can't get him on my phone. Where is he? This yeah. guy posted a video of this lady. She's a nurse, and she fainted. She she had the, had the vaccine shot, and then 15 minutes later, she went and talked to reporters. And when she was talking to reporters... She started feeling really heavy, and she actually fainted right there. But then it chopped it. You could tell it sort of stopped that video right there. And my friend posted it and said, see, Brian, this is why I'm not taking the vaccine. So I went and Googled it, and it was a regular video, and somebody hacked that up. But she says that she faints all the time from any pain. And so she explained that after. But, you know, these guys, they yeah. edit all this stuff out, so they're trying to say, oh, the vaccine's unsafe. I have a son who has to lay down. He has to lie down every time he gets a vaccine because he just passes out no matter what. Really? Yeah. He just faints. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And he's not even really nervous about it. Just some kind of physical reaction. You know what I got really used to? It's funny how you can get used to stuff. When I had uh, that uh, last year, I had a, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I had that the kidney stone. It took me off the air here for about five nights. And um, I, uh, I got the kidney stone. And I was lying in the hospital. They would wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, time for your blood draw. And then they would just draw some blood out of me. And then I'd go back to sleep. And then uh, at, at 9 o'clock in the morning, go, time for your 9 o'clock blood draw. <laughs> and they're just waking me up and doing. And I got to the point where you can draw blood out of my arm now. And I just don't care. Oh, I had to do it for yeah. six months, twice a day. When they had me on IVs. Right. And you got used to I'd it, go to right? Doc, go down to the hospital be on my way to work and on the way home. Yeah. And oh, and, and then they put a they put a, a thing in my arm that was uh, uh, attached to a drip for saline because they were constantly putting saline in my system to flush the, the kidney yeah. stone out. And uh, that thing was in there for many, 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 many days. And after a while, you just don't care. And and finally, I go. They go. Well, are you in pain? And you always say you're in pain. Never say you're not in pain. And the reason is then you don't get anything. But if you say you're in pain, and then they say, well, how much? From a from one to ten, how bad is the pain? And you go, you don't want to say ten because they know you're faking it. But you go nine. And so they give you nine worth of the of the of the drug, right? And you're off to la la land. Um, but I called it my, I called this IV drip that I had in my arm, my USB port. Cause everything they needed to do to me, they would just, you know, shove it in through that. Uh, yep. and they would add the, you You're know, the putting Charlie killers. to sleep over there. Huh? No. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> and those are tubes. Those aren't just needles. Those are tubes. Are <laughs> Charlie, are we putting you to sleep? Yeah, this is all exciting. <laughs> I saw you falling asleep, man. You were falling asleep. You fell asleep for like. I don't, I don't blame him. If I were listening to this show, I'd be out like a light by now. You know. So. You you know I, I watched the show after the show last night. I wasn't on it, and I've never seen Charlie so talkative. <laughs> well, I get a chance to talk on that show. Okay, on the Thursday night show. No, he he met the Thursday night show last night. Show. Right, last night. Yeah. Last oh, night. last night. I thought you were talking about You know, you're show. welcome to talk as much as you want to on this show, you know. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just. You're luck. just quieter on Jack's show, and I don't know why. Or you're quieter on this show than you are on yeah. Jack's, you know. Uh, I listened to it one night, and it sounds like a big extravaganza going on. It's like, <laughs> it's pretty. 
<laughs> Where do you listen to it on iTunes? I mean, tune in or yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I just yeah, listen. Oh, on, oh, on the website. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. I, I remember uh, Alex, you're at the Live 105 comedy show. Sometimes it would be just like ten comedians just all yelling jokes at the same time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and then, you couldn't even, it was like, what the fuck's going on, you know? <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much any of those shows made sense, you know? <laughs> a lot of them didn't. No. <laughs> you had to know what people sounded like to know who was talking. Yeah. And their inside jokes. But yeah. I think the reason the show did so well is that I always felt that if I had a station in which you went to it and a bunch of people were just yelling at each other, back and forth, just yelling, and you couldn't understand even what they were yelling about, that would get the highest ratings in town because <laughs> well, people would go, was. I just, I, you know, they come across, they go through everything else. Here's good music da, 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 and uh, happy talk. Hi, we're here. It's a very pleasant day here in San Francisco. And then you go to this one channel and everybody's going, Bruh! I think people would stop and listen to that. Monty yeah. and Ruben in one room. That's enough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had I'm some. When you had Bubbles and Feldo, and then you had Bob Rubin, all these guys going at it at the same time, and they're just all laughing so hard because they're doing these inside one-liners that were just, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Ah, uh, those were the good old days when I used to be a big shot. Yeah. <laughs> Called entertainment. Right? Huh? That's entertainment. That's entertainment. Sure is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the ups and downs. Yeah, but anyway, uh, so, you know, today I was just doing a lot of thinking about, you know, w when I grew up, when I was born, and where I was born, my parents, and I don't know, for some reason I thought about that, because that happened so long ago, yeah. and and uh, uh, now. Dark uh, ages. You know, and I and I wondered, I just I was just thinking about how well it, uh, it was going, it went, and I think I was pretty lucky. I grew up at a time when there was a certain innocence that a kid grew up with that I don't think kids grow up with today. Mm. And I don't know, uh, Brian, uh, you, you, know, you have some kids. You're raising them. Do they have that same sense of innocence? That oh, no. No, no. But I mean, the, the part of the go out and play stuff. I mean, I remember on the Friday, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, first thing in the morning, I'm on my bike and I'm gone. I'm gone till nighttime. And exactly. my, I don't think my parents knew where I was. Or I told I my I told my parents I'll be Hills. I'll be back for dinner and then I would yeah, go. I was up in Redder City Hills and we we'd take the bikes down yeah. to the canyon to the community store and then all the way back. Would like you let your day. kids do that now? I I can't pay them to get out of the house for an hour. <laughs> when I tell them to go out for an hour, it's like death. They have the zombie walk outside. I like, hate that. It drives oh. me crazy. I, I told them. I told them last year, I said, this summer, 2020, but now this happened, I'm locking them out. I'm going to push them out the door. I'm locking the doors. Here's your bicycle. Come back when it's nighttime. Yeah. Steve? It's a totally different world with kids now. Steve, totally where did... Where did I, just, I cannot get used to it. Steve, yeah. where did you grow up? In Stratford, Ontario. Oh, really? So you're Canadian. All the way. Yeah. yeah. In London, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Justin Bieber's hometown. I see. And now, right now, you live where? London, Ontario. Oh, which you, so is you still live. Oh, away. so you still live in Canada. Okay, but yeah. do you do most yeah. of you do most of your trucking here? You don't do your trucking through Canada. Uh, yeah, most of it in the states. Sometimes I go to Western Canada. Mm -hmm. do you, it, and there's no, there's a, like a reciprocity there. So if you're a trucker from Canada, you can just come right down here and do all the stuff you want to do, right? Yeah, just you just have to have your. Uh, your load clear customs and that's yeah. It. Now, do Passport. you ever pick up something here and take it somewhere else? Or, yeah. And you can do that too, right? Uh, back to Canada only. Oh, back to uh, Canada. You can't, oh. A Canadian driver cannot uh, pull a Canadian, uh, an American load from one American city to another American oh, city. Okay. That's called interstating. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin will know that because he's a truck driver. So, so, so really, you just pick, if you pick up something in California, you've got to be taking it to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it I important for you to get, to get a load in is wherever you're going to, coming back, so that you're at least uh, getting paid for both trips? Well, yeah, you got to pay the truck, you got to pay for fuel, so it has to make make money. So 
They don't want to deadhead you that long. Yeah. That's a long way to deadhead. And there are a lot of people who do want to send yeah. stuff up to Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Well, it's, you know, I don't know how that works. You know, it's not, not in my bailiwick. No uh, load, no dough. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, Charlie, is there anything uh, in the news that's been uh, been bugging you at all? Or are you just uh, paying attention? Did you ever pass a stimulus today? No. No, no they 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 all worthless pieces of shit. What are they doing? Yeah. Well, you even, see, uh, you know, I was talking to Bobby Slayton today, and he said they're still worthless pieces of shit, even if they pass it. He said, $600? For yeah, what? Exactly. What are you going to get for $600? Exactly my point. You know, and that's why you pay rent in New York City. <laughs> yeah, I right. listened to him for about a, a, a half hour or so today, and they all whined and bitched about, you know, oh, well, we're giving them 600 bucks, and then Bernie got up there and he started screaming, we need, we need $1,200. We need everybody. $1,200? That, that wouldn't take care of it. Okay. No, it's, that's, yeah. that's far behind, too. But, you know... Whining. To stay over Two the grand a month. Shit done again. Maybe twelve hundred dollars a month wouldn't do anything. No, no it's, two grand it's a month. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So and I they mean, think that they're giving us a whole. You know, we're going to. Well, you know what? The, you know what their plan is is what's going to happen. They're going to give you the six hundred bucks, and you're immediately going to spend it on things at merchants and stuff in your area, <laughs> and so therefore yeah. the money gets passed around within an, a neighborhood. But it's not going to help anybody. It. it you know. It, it's just. It's insane. It's insane. They have no idea of what people, how hard up people are right now and how well, terrible think, things are. I think $600, you could probably get a high price hooker in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but I can't think of anything. If they sent me $600 or With Marjorie or and I 1200 I don't know what we'd spend it on, you know. Uh, another cake? Yeah, another cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or fattening food. Anyway, I just uh, it's 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 amazing. We so just, then we're shut down as of midnight again. What, what is shutting down at midnight? In California, yeah. Oh yeah, California. Did you get did you get that alert on your phone today? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I do. Quite, what I do know is was, I was talking to my business manager in my home county of Marin. Uh, all the beds are filled now. They don't have any room for anybody in the hospitals. Yeah, we I have zero point zero percent capacity here. Yeah. Yeah. There's 28 uh, ICU beds in Marin, and they're all filled. Yeah, we don't have any. Is that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, the state down. But the car wash is open. Um, all these other stores are open like it's normal. You know, everyone's just wearing a mask and everything's fine. They're limiting the indoor people, but they're not taking it seriously. California's in bad shape right now. <laughs> Terrible shape, right? Yeah, right? They, they've left us in the dust. Yeah, <laughs> and he lives in Texas, which is uh, yeah. you know, the death state. You know, amazing. Not anymore. Not anymore. California's got the big numbers. California's got the big numbers. Florida's it, doing pretty we, badly, too. Yeah, they said in the news today that we had more deaths in California than they had in the country in October. Well, in New York, we're still fourth from the bottom. So, you know, we're not doing terribly, but we're it's certainly going up, and I ain't going out. Okay? So... Hey, yeah. listen, that's it. That's my big birthday show. It was about, about as eventful as my birthday was today. So, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, girlfriend did send out for Happy dinner. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy huh. fucking birthday. Uh, Jeff, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Charlie <laughs> Wallace, always good to have you here, Charlie. Uh, the, uh, Brian, uh, good having you here, as well as I love having Steve in just that truck, man. That's that's nicer than some people's homes. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you own that truck, by the way, Steve? Oh God, no. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, no, okay. It's a uh, company truck. Yeah, company truck. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, John Larkin from the Tenderloin. <laughs> if, if you go out, have fun. Uh, Alan, thank you so much. We love having you here. You've been a nice addition to the show. Uh, thank Kevin, you. You was, you're always a great addition to the show. And, and Ray, uh, when I see you on the program, it makes me smile. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye from here. And there goes our citizen panel, folks. Let me just uh, unceremoniously hang up on them. Okay, there they go. 
And I'll tell you that I will be back again. Well, on Monday, by the way, let me tell you that at, uh, at 9 o'clock on Monday nights is the exchange with Damian Chaplin. I'll be back here on Tuesday night. We're only going to do two shows next week because it's Christmas week and then New Year's and we're going to be off for the whole week. Uh, but we'll see on Mon- on Tuesday, uh, same time, same station in life, 1030 Eastern Time. Uh, and uh, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And please be careful out there and make sure you wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>